Hello and welcome to the Turn 4 Podcast. I am your host, Dan Maldonado. If this is your first time listening, welcome. If you're a regular listener, welcome back. This podcast comes from two lifelong fans of IndyCar and other forms of motorsport. Before we get into today's show, got to introduce you to my co-host, Tim Reiner. Hey, Timmy. Hello, Dan. How are you? How are you? I'm great. I'm, I am literally fresh back from... Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. Roll in? Yeah, what'd you do? Roll in like two hours ago? Two hours ago. ago. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So yeah, tell us about your bucket Emptied list. out the camper. We just picked America. it up and shook it out in the driveway and then just, Good. you know, sorted through everything we needed to do. Yeah, I was going to say, this is a quick Tim, turnaround for a show since you just got back. I know. Thank you for putting all the show notes together. Now you realize, right, uh, five, six pages is kind of easy. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't take long to do it. No, it just throw it together. A lot of good stuff happened during the race, so it was pretty easy to throw it, it together. Good. But yeah, it was good. You're back. So, hey, um, I I need a few minutes to talk about this Road America thing. So, I I was talking to some people at this at the at the event, and I kept saying I I've waited 30 years to get here, and that's absolutely true, right? I mean, that's absolutely true since the cart days. I mean. Anytime that IndyCar or Champ Car at that time went to Road America, that racing was great. And it looked great, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It looked great on TV and everything else. I can't, after being there now, I can't believe I waited that long to be there and I can't wait to get back. I, I mean, that's pretty cool. Tim, it was amazing. It was, I can't, I was not there, but you see the pictures on TV and you, you hear of these experiences and everything. This was IndyCar mm -hmm. Woodstock. Tim, oh my there goodness. was people, I mean, people everywhere, campers everywhere, tents, golf carts, dogs. I, I've never seen so many dogs at, a, at an IndyCar race before in my entire life. Big dogs. We got to oh see goodness. this big St. Bernard named Bacon. And then our campground had a, a puppy, St. Bernard, who's four months old, was 70 pounds already. They took him to the oh track, too. His name was Amos. He was very popular. Devin, Devlin DeFrancesco was cruising by on a scooter, stopped, like literally skidded to a stop to see Amos. And then oh um, just the people, Tim, just amazing event. I, I can't, and the food, if you left Road America after being there for the day hungry, there's something wrong with you, right? We, and you know me, right? I love to eat, right? I live to <laughs> eat. And I, we had, we had amazing food. I had something the first day we were there called a schnitzel burger. And I was like, what is that? And I was like, well, is it like the tenderloins in Indianapolis? And he goes, no, it's, it's like a sausage patty, a spicy sausage patty. And it looked kind of like a pork, like a breakfast sausage, but like hamburger size. And it was on the most amazing oh bun. Um, we, I had steamed corn on the cob. I, I, you know, Tim, it was amazing. It, it was. So was it like food trucks or was amazing. it like concessions? Stands, food, food trucks. There was concessions. I mean, all kinds of things. All and Okay. And cheap to eat, dude. And cheap to eat. Oh, it really good. was. I mean, it nice. was not expensive. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't like going to the ball game where you get, you know, an $8 soda and a, you know, $15 bag of peanuts or something like that. And it, it I, I got, you know, cause I like peanuts. I like the in shell peanuts. And I like to crack those. And I, I got those, they were like five bucks or something for a 12 ounce bag and, you know, got a soda mm. and that was a couple of bucks. And I mean, it was, it, it was, but it was so cool, man. It really so, was. It so was yeah. So, so, cool. so as a first time yeah. visitor to the track, what would you do differently than uh, the second time you go around? Is there something you would change or do you think the way you did it and the way you guys went about it was ideal for a fan to go? Um, Cause I think you camped off site, right. And then you we did. Uh, went to the track, I believe daily and then uh, would go back. So um, it seems pretty straightforward, but is there anything from a, you know, going around the track or, um, being able to see the whole four miles, right. That's a long way. So I don't know. I know you exercise on a regular basis, so maybe it wasn't a big deal to get around the track for you, but anything you would change? Uh, the only thing I would change is I would seriously look into staying at the track 
instead of okay. at the offsite campground. And the campground we stayed at, it was Plymouth Rock uh, Campground, which is literally across the street from where we were, were the main the main gate into Road America. And okay. it was super close. It was easy in and out. It was no big deal. And the campground was great. It was a huge campground. It had to be the biggest one we've ever stayed at. Um, but I would probably more seriously look into staying at Road America to kind of get that vibe of what's going on at night and the things that never really seem to stop. And then, um, mm -hmm. as you know, we, and I knew it was not going to really be like to our benefit. We had bought that VIP, that suite package or whatever it was to put us in that paddock suite. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend the money for that again. I, I, I mean, it was really nice and everybody in there was super nice and the food in there was really good. Um, but I, I wouldn't, I didn't want to watch the race from in there. So we tried to straddle the two. I think I sent you the video. We saw the flyover from on top of that building. We saw the start from on top of that building. So right at the start finish line, but otherwise we had camped out in turn five in kind of the Valley of turn five, met some dudes. We dropped our coolers down. We're like, guys, we'll be back. You know, if you want me to bring you something back, I'm happy to bring you whatever. And you know me, I don't care. I'll, I'll bring you something back. They, they held yep, our spots sure. for us. We had the coolers there and we came back up and, you know, our spot was still there and we watched the race from turn five. And then, and then afterwards oh, nice. we went back up to the suite cause they still had food and everything um, up in there. But I, I would spend that money on a campsite inside the track. So we could just be there for, you know, the full four days on site. Awesome. That's probably what I would do. Then you met with some so, people while you were there, which was cool. Too. I did. So, you, you so were I'm not, I'm, I'm not wearing my hat. It's, it, it's behind me here, this one, but, um, I have one, the one that I wore is upstairs in the dirties, I'm sure, but, or mixed amongst my dirty clothes. Um, but I had a chance to meet, um, the, right. One of the marketing guys with Sancio who put this thing on, who, you know, we've communicated with over the course of the year since last year, he's the one that sent us the hats, Herbert. He was an amazing host. Uh, we got to hang around with him and I kind of felt bad. He had his family there and, you know, I, I felt like I was crashing the party a little bit with him and his, you know, lovely wife and his beautiful daughters and, and everything. And I, but we had an amazing time with him. He was a wonderful host, took us around on a golf cart and that was on Friday. And then Saturday got to meet a listener, right? Charlie Mack and, and his, his, you know, his bride, Mrs. Mack and, we got to oh, nice. uh, spend some time with them in the Corvette Corral and they were amazing hosts as well. And, and just, I mean, just couldn't be more gracious with their time and, um, and their, you know, their kindness about our show and, you know, how they, how they, you know, spend so much time listening to our show and everything too. So, I mean, Charlie Mack and Mrs. Mack, right. I mean, we can't, I can't thank you enough for, for your hospitality and everything. And, um, you know, got to hang out in the Corvette Corral, like I said. So we got to see Charlie's. That's pretty um, cool. C5, yeah, pretty, awesome. pretty big deal. And then Brad from Wisconsin, who sent me an email um, several weeks ago. Brad, Road America is a big deal, dude. Um, I'm not a big golfer. So, you know, I didn't take up any golfing in the area, but we went into, uh, we went to the Johnsonville store, <laughs> which yes, there's a Johnsonville store. And, um, uh, picked up some stuff at the Johnsonville store. We went into it was the Sheboygan. You sent. Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 And uh, we went into Sheboygan and walked around like the lakefront and the Sheboygan riverfront and, you know, did all that stuff. It was cold on Thursday when we did that, but still had a, had an amazing day out in, in the area. And then yesterday, um, we went into Plymouth, into downtown Plymouth, Wisconsin, and we did the mural tour. There's like these, 31 murals that are are painted on the side of these buildings there's i think there's 27 or 28 official murals but they also include these other four and wendy and i you know walked this you know downtown plymouth and we had we had lunch down there and and did the mural tour i'll tell you you know we live in the midwest so we kind of take it for granted right i mean minnesota you know northern michigan wisconsin indiana it kind of all looks the same but I mean, everybody was so friendly and it was just beautiful. It was, it really was, was a great time. This is the longest we've ever been out on a camping trip. Six days. Mm -hmm. We didn't have the dogs. We obviously didn't have the kids. Um, 
but uh, it was the longest we'd ever been out on a camping trip. But I, I'll tell you, I'm I'm glad to be home. I'm happy to be home, and I'm I'm ready to get back to work. But I was just as happy to spend another five six days there. Yeah, wow. And then you had a run in with Hinch. I saw. Yeah, we did, and I didn't really realize that my wife obviously has a little crunch on uh, on James Hinchcliffe there because she she saw him, spotted him like as we were coming around the corner, and she was like Hinch, and you know, and I was like, well, we got to get a picture if you want one. She goes, okay, can we ask him? I'm like, well, of course. And we asked yeah. him for a picture, and of course, he's always gracious with that, and and it was yeah, good to do nice. that. And then, um, yeah, it, it it really was, it was well, good. Of- yeah, it really was. Yeah. Amazing. So I got, I got a couple other moment. nuggets. Watch. So oh, you, you talk, I, I'll tell you about the track. You mentioned the track, right? And mm-hmm. we got to walk the track last night. Oh, it's they just it's opened it up and said every Monday and Wednesday, you can ride, run or walk, ride your bike, run or walk okay. at, at 530 to 730. You get the you get full track access to go walk the track. Interesting. It's in my Strava. Nice walk, four I mile couldn't walk. wait yeah. to put that on my Strava so you could see the track pattern and and the whole thing. And oh, very cool! It was a nice walk. We did it in like an hour and eighteen minutes or something like that. And it was very um, cool. We started in five in the runoff in five, and then did the track, and then finished in the runoff in five. Okay, very and cool. It was great. It's good. Nice. Smooth as glass. It looks Smooth beautiful. Yes. Yeah. It yeah. Look- Super smooth. I guess you waited for the new pavement to go um, to get put in before you actually went. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of talk about the pavement. There's a lot of talk about how smooth it was. There's a lot of talk of once you got off the line, how slippery it got just because it needs to be rubbered in and everything else. But it looked beautiful on TV from what I saw and probably what most people saw. Um, You know, it looks like it's just going through the woods and everything else. So very, very nice. Yeah, it is. Uh, And I have lots of those pictures. So I'll try to post those to our our instagram and put those out there i have all the pictures from when we were on track and and all that stuff too the bridges and um you know the kink and headed down to canada corner and you know walking up the hill on on the main street and all that and it's all there so it was it was pretty good i heard somebody coming up behind me heavy breathing and i was like that's what i sound like when i'm on the bike with tim during the you know during our our ride Right during our, our <laughs> not ride. true at all. Come and on. I turned around and looked, and she You're was running. Me. What are you? She was about? running up the hill, and I was like, "Ooh, good for you, sister!" Because I just saw mm-hmm. you leave the car, and you're already now ahead of us on this hill, running up this hill. Oh, so it was goodness. pretty good. Wow, very cool. So, hey, sounds like an awesome time. So glad you made it there. You got your bucket list checked off there, and amazing. You made it back safely with the trailer in tow and everything else. So yeah. good deal. That was good. Um, are you ready? Get into this? Power I'm four. ready. Yeah. Totally Power four ready. plus one. So Chip Ganassi yeah. Racing, on a roll, man. On a roll. It's it's funny. You you make the note that uh, the Power Four is the exact same as it, it was from Detroit. Finish, not so it much, is, but in the yeah. same order. It's the yeah. same same order of uh, by, by by team, right? But yeah, it's uh, shows you kind of how who, who's up there, right? And who's up mm-hmm. there all the time and sort of how it plays out for sure. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, Alex Pillow takes the win. You know, it, it now cements a 74 point lead over his teammate um, by his teammate, Marcus Erickson. We were talking a lot about, is this it, right? Like, does anybody have anything left for mm-hmm. Pillow? Is this Pillow's championship to, to lose? And I think that we said, you know, we had been saying all along that there's no seeming um, deficiency in his game, right? I mean, where are you, mm-hmm. where are you going to beat him? He's, he's good kind of everywhere. Maybe not as good as like a new garden on an oval or whatever, but he's not bad on an oval. So, you know, where does, where does he go? And then when he had the, the practice crash, I think that's where people were like, oh, here we go, right? This is going to be, mm-hmm. this is going to be a rough weekend for him. Nope. Qualified third, won the race. Is yeah, this I think it, it's Tim? a testament. I, I, yeah, I last week or two weeks ago, I was like, yeah, he's pretty much unstoppable. And then after this week's race, where you mentioned the accident that took place and the team put the car back together, he goes out and qualifies third after they put the car back together. And it was a big impact. I think it was 120 Gs, is what I sort of read. That's a, that's a big hit in the final turn. 
Um, and then he gets bumped around a little bit uh, during the race um, at one point. And I thought, oh, is this the unraveling of Alex Pillow that he's going to get a little, you know, out of sync with what he normally does? And it wasn't the case. He just composed himself, got back to it, maintained his place, and then uh, obviously went and tracked uh, Herta down in the final laps. And and then once he passes, he basically checks out. Nobody checked out all day. He checks out to seven seconds, whatever it is, at the end of the day and takes the victory by a pretty good margin when the cars were pretty close, which all comes down to, I think, how long the straights are and how well these cars draft. And so it was tight quite a bit through the whole race. So it just shows that, man, he's got the composure and the team, if he does make a mistake or if anybody on that team makes a mistake, they can put it back together, put it back pretty much the same way it was before and still get really good lap times out of the car. So kudos to Polo for keeping his cool and being able to get through that. And obviously the team, when it comes to putting together a car and back together that, that performs the same. So they, they're clicking on all cylinders. Yeah. I mean, it was down to the wire. I mean, when he was in qualifying, there was a portion of the car that wasn't even wrapped right? Was still black carbon fiber on that, on that one mm -hmm. side that he, yeah. he had tagged the wall with. So, you know, they got it back together. Obviously they got it back together pretty well. That didn't, that didn't seem to stop them. And of course they, you know, had, had finished wrapping the car for, for the race, but unstoppable, Tim, unstoppable. I, I really believe it. I, at this point, he's going to head to road or he's going to head to mid Ohio next. And it's kind of uh, like, of course. it's almost like, okay, where do we scratch him in, in the top three? right yeah exactly he's got to be a favorite going into mm -hmm. there he's he's finished first out of the uh, last four races he's finished first and uh, indy he was involved in that pit incident and ended up finishing fourth or something whatever it yeah. was but uh so he's he's on a hot hot roll and we'll see you know what comes out of mid ohio but i obviously he's got to be the guy right everybody's looking to going mm -hmm. uh oh what's Pelo going to do and Ganassi's always been good at Mid Ohio. The mm -hmm. team has always performed well sure with Dixon at, at Mid Ohio. So yep. um yep. wouldn't be unusual to see him take another victory. And if he does, and yep. if Newgarden has a bad race, or if if Pato Award has a bad race, or if you know Erickson or any combination of those three have a bad race, you might as well forget it. Yeah. Yeah. It's right? a big lead. It's more than yeah. you can only earn race one, one and a half. Eve. Yeah. Yeah, 51. yeah, basically. Yeah. 51 points, yeah. Yep. So, uh, Dixie, Dixie had kind of an interesting weekend, right? Kind of an odd sort of deal. He was getting out of the way of Grosjean, didn't see Will Power coming up as well, and, you know, came together with Will in a couple of ways, yeah. right? So, they came sure together yep. <laughs> and then spun off course. I got to tell you this though, I, and and we'll talk about it a little bit more, but when I saw Will kind of start just, you know, the willpower double bird, number one, right? The patented double bird. And he starts thumping on over to, to Dixon <laughs> and he hadn't taken his helmet off. I thought he's going to grab Dixon. He's going to grab, right? Dixon's already got his helmet off and he's putting his stuff in the, in you know, his bell yeah. inside the helmet and everything. I knew he was going to grab Dixon because he didn't take his helmet off. <laughs> I know he totally did. He totally oh, grabbed yeah. him. Totally grabbed him, and, and it's like he kicked what? a part of the car of Will's car <laughs> right. while he was walking away. He was he was fiery. He was. It's, he was. It's crazy, but obviously Dixon, no malice by what he was trying no. to do. He he didn't see he was there and came over, but huge impact. Dixon had to go to his right. backup car, right? So Dixon starts what twenty third, I think it is. Um, and then from there, he moves up 19 spots to finish fourth, almost makes a podium. Right. That's pretty amazing that he almost yeah. finishes on the podium after that. So I think it really comes down. Is Dixon still the ice man? I say after that weekend, sure is, right? Absolutely. He's still the ice yeah. man. Yeah. It's, and, you yeah. know, it's one of those things that um, I, I almost think, like, if he didn't have the Saturday issue, could he have been up there for the win? Maybe battling below? I think so I, so yeah top three for sure i mean he wouldn't have had to cut through all those all those cars and you know make all those passes and everything he, he definitely could have been top three 
you know, that could have been a, yeah. a one, two in either order. Right. Pelo, yeah, Dixon, agree. Dixon, yeah. Pelo. I mean, it could have been a one, two easily. Um, yeah. Dixon doesn't make moves like that. Like he's not a, he's not a dirty driver. He's not a dumb, mm -hmm. you know, he's not a dumb, dumb. Um, I think things happen. I think with a track this size, you're not, you're certainly not going to get spotters out there. Although where we were sitting in five, there was a number of teams that had, um, personnel stationed kind of where we were, but again, you know, I don't know how much more, what you're really, you're going to see there other than, you know, some, you know, elbows out going up the hill into six, you know, but yeah. you're certainly not posted back there and, and, you know, you're not going to see something like that. So accidents happen. I mean, like you said, I mean, that was, that was a masterful drive 23rd to, to fourth place. Cause let's face it. He started right alongside uh, power and power didn't finish mm -hmm. in the top five. So, you know, yeah. that was good strategy. That was good driving. And that was a hell of a car underneath him. So it really was. Good. Yeah. And he was sort of tracking down mm -hmm. uh, Pato uh, at the yes. end and, you know, there, there were, there was conversation of whether he would get to him and what would happen when award, you got to think back to long beach when award put him in the, the fence. Right. And so, um, you know, Dixon said there'll be a day for redemption on that one. So there's more to come. I, I think he still holds a little bit of a grudge there. So we'll see what happens as the season rolls on. I think he does too. And I, I don't blame him because I, I think you can't be indignant like that. Right. I mean, you, you can, even if you're just putting it on for the camera, at least try to be a little contrite and award yep. didn't have any of that. So yeah, that yep. day will come. That day will definitely come. Uh, Erickson finishing sixth uh, again, not a bad finish, not a bad finish, but probably not as strong as his teammates, right? Up two spots mm -hmm. from eighth place start. Uh, obviously the contract situation seems to be getting a lot hotter. Um, and that, that starts by, you know, Zach Brown throwing a, a hand grenade in that, in that discussion a, a few weeks ago, but you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, we'll see, I mean, we'll get it, we'll get a little bit more into that shortly. Yeah. And he's been a model of consistency all year, but, uh, you know, I, I think, uh, overall it's not a bad day for him. It's definitely, um, a top six, you know, you like to be in the top five. Obviously you had a teammate run by you that started 23rd. So you weren't as quick as Dixon, but at the end of the day, Marcus has been super consistent and uh, shows up week in and week out. And I don't think he's he, he's even had a finish outside the top 10. So right. uh, good for him. And uh, he'd like to be up there a little further. But uh, again, a solid, solid run for Marcus. Right. He had a, a stint on the Reds that is at a time where his teammates did not. And we kept hearing uh, during this race that the red was not uh, the preferred tire. It was, it was inconsistent. Mm -mm. Uh, and so, you know, maybe that's kind of where Erickson had to hang on for a little bit and wasn't really able to, to make a move because he was on a different strategy than his teammates with being on that red during a kind of a middle stint and yeah. uh, just couldn't, couldn't put himself, uh, you know, upright on that thing. But And, and the finish. reds weren't even the, the chosen tire for qualifying either. It was really no. bizarre. Which is bizarre, so I think it yeah. goes back to the new surface and how the tire grip worked and what the tires that they bring uh, brought to the track and then um, yeah the the primary was the one to be on and it was always like when you put on the reds and how quickly can you get them off to get back on the primary? Yeah, it was interesting. Um, I was listening to J.R. Hildebrand on his podcast today um, on the way home and he was talking about the straightaways at road America are so long that it cools the tires, right? So if you're, if you're just not getting either the right, the reds or the black into the, the right operating temperature, be able to keep them into the right operating temperature, right? The mechanical grip's just not going to be yeah. consistent, especially with yeah. these reds, right? Which should come up to temp pretty quickly because they're the soft tires. But if you're cooling them off on these long straights, by the time you get into a turn, Right. There's your inconsistency. Yeah. So yep. at least with the black you know are coming in. Uh 24th place, Marcus Armstrong. You you like Marcus. Um, kind of an odd pit strategy. Um, you know, track position way more important than trying to go uh four less reds on or laps on red. I think they were hurrying him off of those reds, is what it seemed like for whatever reason, but uh wasn't really able to um get himself going 24th place against your teammates six, four and one. I think this is probably his worst race 
against the backdrop of his teammates, if I'm not mistaken. Right, Timmy? Yeah, he he um it was it was a strange pit call. There was a yellow flag and everybody's coming in to get on the Reds to get them out of the way and their crew decides to leave him out. So they left him out. He has to run three or four laps and then come in for the Reds. And I would say track position is everything. You don't want to give up track position. So you come in, you get the primaries or you get the Reds on. So you're going to run a few or less laps, but you're all the way in the back of the field. So a terrible call. He was running well up front. He was running third for part of the day. And then he was top five for a lot of the day. He started 11th, I believe. Um, and so from there, no, he did not start 11th. Um, I'm looking, I don't know exactly where he started. It's not on the sheet. Uh, he started eighth. Okay. So he started eighth and, uh, was up in the top five. And then you make this pit call and it, it ruins his entire race. A terrible call. So yeah, I, Marcus down. did nothing well, wrong. He got lapped on the end there too. He got pushed off. So, yeah. So yeah. he did nothing wrong overall, though. I think he was just frustrated with the, the pitch strategy and what it turned out to be. That's your guy, though. You like him. You root for him. I do like him. I do root for him. I think he's going to be a race winner at some point. Maybe not this year, but definitely next year. And he'll uh, he'll, he'll be someone to watch uh, for sure. If Ganassi loses Erickson and Polo, which I'm not certain he will, if, if Ganassi loses Erickson and Polo, he has to reload. Right. So, which means Armstrong will have to really, really step up next year. I think he's got the ability to do it. I, I don't, I don't doubt that at all. Yeah. I don't either. He yeah. looks really good and really smooth. He's been strong. Yeah. Uh, power two team, Team Penske. Uh, our power two team, based on results, but the team, by and large, Timmy, did not roll off the truck very well. No, they were terrible off the truck. Yeah. Um, 15th through 17th practice one big deal or big deal. Yeah. Practice two, right. McLaughlin ninth, Joseph 12th and power, right. In a boxing match with uh, the ice man, but yep. they weren't great. So, I mean, to, for new garden to start fourth, finish second, I think is a, an amazing day, right. Is a, a very tremendous mm -hmm. day. And he needs this level of consistency. He needs to consistently be in the top five to take advantage of two wins on the season and try to eat away Pelot's points advantage yep. because he's too inconsistent. He's up and down, right? Roller coaster. And Pelot is very, very good and has been very, very good mm -hmm. every race. He doesn't have a bad race and Newgarden has a few of them. So yep. this is, this is really good for him. So we'll see what happens. I got a story for you. So right, I'm ready. I mentioned uh, when he and I went back to the the paddock suites after after the race, and we went up there and we're having a a snack and uh, a soda, and and we were just kind of watching the the broadcast and the post race interviews and things on the on the broadcast, and then we were getting ready to leave. We we're going to go back to the paddock shops and then do a little bit more walking around and then, and then head back to the campground. So we're walking out and we're walking out behind Pato Award and Joseph Newgarden, who had just left the media center from doing the post-race media. I'm mm -hmm. five, six ish. Right. And Joseph is an Adonis and he was walking ahead of us a few steps. And then they stopped at one point, probably, I think they were waiting for their PR people to bring the golf carts up so they can, they could ride out. And I walked up behind Joseph Newgarden and I gave him a bump like this. Like I, you know, so if you're listening on the podcast, I kind of elbowed you, him. You nudged him? I did. And I said, hey man, oh, don't okay. be in my way. And he turned around and looked at me and then he started laughing, right? Because there's me, right? Like a foot shorter yeah. than him. And, and, and I just said, hey man, great race today. I said, give him hell the rest of the season. And he had a big smile and he was really, really super nice about it. Couldn't get, a, I'm not making a judgment. I'm just saying, couldn't get awards eye, eye contact at all. So oh my goodness. in that whole situation, That's but Joseph was great. Yeah. It was really cool that I was yeah. like, what, am, you know, you know me, right. I don't care. I, I don't care who you are. Right. Yeah, Everybody, totally. we all put our pants on the same way. And so, yeah, I bumped him, but it was, <laughs> it was great. And he was a great sport about it. And um, so that was good. 
But um, eighth place for Scotty Mack. Um, I'm sure the team's happy with that as a finish. But uh, you know, Scotty Mack certainly would certainly would want more. Plus, he has the title sponsor uh, Sancio on on the side of his car. They had a hundred guests there and um, signage all over the place, and he was fantastic with all of the guests. Yeah. Um, you know, we could see it and walking around the paddock and everything. That's cool. And, and everything. So, did you see the he, black hats? Yes, those are this year's hats. Those are pretty I, cool looking. I, and and the follow up question? No, I didn't ask for one because I, I know you didn't ask, and that's yeah. totally fine. Um, but they're they're, they're yeah. really cool. I oh, like yeah, they them. were really cool. They, they yeah. do a nice job with them. I don't. Oh yeah. I don't know what it yeah, is, yeah. but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a big. I deal. saw them in Victory Lane. I was like, wow, yeah. those are the new ones. They look really cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, McLaughlin just never really factored in the race. I don't think that Penske was as good at this track, and I think that you know Newgarden took advantage of what he needed to take advantage of, a little bit of Tim Sindrick magic uh, as well, and I think that's that's kind of what helped him, you know, through the through the pace there. Uh, Will Power, yep. you know, weekend to forget. Kind of an odd. Still a 13th, yeah. Still a 13th, but, uh, you know. Yeah, but not, just the, I mean, not what Dixon did. And he started, I think he started 22nd. He, he started, he started 22nd, 22nd, yes. 22nd finished in position 13th. in front of Scott Dixon, yeah. Dixon was 23rd to 4th. Yeah. So, you know, still, so I it mean. it just shows you, like, result. what yeah. type of cars they have, what Ganassi brought and what Penske brought. I think Penske overall, they improved. The, obviously, they improved the cars from P1. Mm-hmm. Uh, practice one was terrible for them for as a team coming off the trailer, and they had to make a bunch of adjustments to get the car in a position to compete. Really, and, by and the you way, see other teams that come there. off that, and they and they stay there the whole weekend, right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And you get you get Newgarden in the in the top in the top six for qualifying, so the fast six, so. That was surprising as well. The others not didn't do as well, and and power overall with his with his racing did well on race day. But man, everything else was just fiery. Right? Yeah, for Dick. It's, for it's like power. the old Will's back. It was. It, it definitely was the old Will power. Right? The double bird and the you know Grosjean needs a punch in the face. He's a piece of crap, and then yeah. you know grabbing. Totally. Dixon and, you know, kicking a piece of the car and complaining about the track, which, you know, I, I understood his complaints about the track was when you're off the track, right? Cause it, it's bouncy. I mean, you see those cars go bouncing around through there and it's, it's Mm -hmm. frightening, but Hey, Will keep it between the lines, dude. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. That's was his comment. Like once you're off, you're off and it's a wild ride and you're going to break your back and yeah. whatnot but uh if you keep it on the track that's good but i think even outside the groove if you get out of the groove a little bit it shoots you right off and so yeah. you're out there more often than you'd like to be and of course you know the the track president didn't take too kindly to will's criticism and he, I, obviously I, I you know we heard the story that marshall pruitt reported saying that track president took one of the honey wagons which if you don't know what the honey wagon is it's the it's the truck that comes to your camper to extract your gray and black water tanks. And we're a family show, so I'm cleaning it up, right? So these, these trucks smell commensurate to their duty, right? Mm-hmm. Duty being the key word here. So they parked it right out in front of Will's camper, left the keys in it, and Will got a big kick out of it. And there's a video of Will riding this thing. He ended up putting it in front of dixon's camper all right and then it, of course it was picked up from there and everybody had a big laugh about that but um <laughs> i'm surprised that will was his i mean he was off the rail though i mean he was he was he couldn't compose himself too well but he was but i i loved that the track president retaliated retaliated in the way that he did right because yeah, i think that's that funny cool. it's, a, it's a great story yeah. right it's kind of like yeah. hey will here you go you're you know crap track and Here's a crap truck. So, <laughs> you know, I think it's, uh, I, I like the little fiery uh, episode of this, right? I think it gives us number one, something to watch next time. Number two, it gives us something to talk about. It just, it, I think it adds to the spice that IndyCar could be if there's some rivalries and there's some, you know, uh, 
loose lips, if you want to call it when talking about other people, obviously you don't want it to get super negative and super down right. in the dirt. But overall, I think it was one of those things that he just spiced it up and everybody's like, whoa, what's going on here? So it'll be interesting how this plays out going forward. Everybody loves a villain. They do. Right. They sure. did, back yeah. back when you and I were kids, they didn't have Luke Skywalker under roost. They had Darth Vader under roost. <laughs> Everybody mm-hmm. loves a villain. So <laughs> good point. Uh, Arrow McLaren, another podium finish for team Arrow McLaren. And this time comes uh, from their team leader. We would expect uh, Pato award to be that team lead. Um, team was quick overall. And um, I, I think if they would have been able to take victory here, either with, with award or Rossi, I don't think that would have come as a surprise to anybody. Um, but really uh, awards result was, was was good i mean the rest was kind of forgettable i mean uh third place for award coming off a disastrous weekend in detroit he's had several disastrous weekends right he threw it away at indy he threw it away in detroit he had the Mm -hmm. crazy thing at long beach which we've talked a lot about so you know getting back on track for good finishes is where he needs to be because miraculously he's still in this championship so if he wants to continue mm-hmm. to be in this championship, this is the kind of finish that he needs to have. Um, Alexander yep. Rossi, as you know, I you know for me practice big deal, but Rossi was fast all all weekend. Don't know what happened qualifying, and then right, it's like I I, I don't know where he, he was. He led every single practice session, including the morning warm up. Right. So, of course, you're thinking the team's thinking we've got a solid, solid chance to win this event. And he struggled, right? I think he was, he was running in the top five for most of the day. Um, But at the end of the day, he ended up finishing 10th and he just kind of faded at the end. So something went terribly wrong. And I'm sure Rossi would tell you that something went terribly wrong. Um, So obviously a disappointment has to be totally. Yeah. Talk about disappointment. I I think I jinxed Felix Rosenquist because I finally got do? my my Rosenquist jersey. Couldn't couldn't wait to wear it. Wore it on race day. Um, <laughs> right in a sea of award in Rossi jerseys. There I am, my Felix Rosenquist jersey, and just proud as punch. And what qualifies sixteenth, finishes twentieth, just unforgettable or just forgettable. For, yeah. uh, for Felix yeah. in this in this race. In, in a race where his teammates were really, it. really good. Yeah. Yeah. He said the car had a lot in qualifying. It was a car had a lot more. I had messed up in one of the corners, which caused me uh, to miss out on the on the fast 12. And so, yeah, he was relegated back to 16th and then, you know, finished 20th. He had some off road excursion at one point. But um, uh, yeah, just not a, a, a weekend to forget it for Rosenquist. So when the team looked like they had it all together, everything was going to come uh, around and they could have, you know, been on the more other drivers could have been on the podium. They could have won this thing. And at the end of the day, it just didn't, didn't pan out that way. Yeah. But I, I mean, he's, he's been able to string together some decent finishes. He's always been in the conversation. This is just kind of an oddball for him. So we'll see how he rebounds. It yeah. So home. When you talk about they're on the podium again, you figure Detroit Rosenquist was third. Mm-hmm. So he was on the yep. podium. So it was just a setback. He didn't finish as bad as Pato did in Detroit. So, um, you know, you look at 26 that Pato did in Detroit, you got Rosenquist 20th here, obviously not anything to talk about, but it's still something that, you know, he's not, he's not a bad driver at all. He's pretty good. Pretty darn good. No. Yeah. You know, a I'm, good weekend. I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a, I'm a big fan. Yep. Obviously I brought, bought the guy's well, you jersey, got his jersey but, of course. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I like him. I, I will tell you this too. We, we're, um, Sancio, uh, and his family, we're, we're kind of in the autograph line when he was in the autograph line as well. And I was, you know, me, I can't stand still. So I was bouncing around about donuts and I was doing, you know, I went back to the, the Indy car shop and I was bouncing all over the place. So anyway, there, the, Arrow McLaren has a PR guy, that's like a that's like the incredible hulk version of felix rosenquist right blonde hair 
same sort of skin <laughs> facial features. I mean, the whole thing, but he's just rock solid, like, you know, much, much. And I went up and you know me, right? Shameless. I went up, put my arm around him. I'm like, hey, dude, how many people think you're, you're Felix Rosenquist in a weekend? He goes, all the time. He goes, <laughs> he goes, we joke that I'm going to walk around with a, with a uh, Sharpie one of these days and just start signing people's <laughs> signing autographs for people. And I'm like, you absolutely should. I said, cause I've seen you three times and I'm thinking, Oh God, what's Felix doing over there? Oh wow. What's Felix doing over there? And then we were walking the paddock, Wendy and I, we were walking and she goes, is that Felix over there? And I'm like, no, that's the PR guy that I was talking to yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy, he's got it down. It's it's Felix's stunt double, literally. It's Felix's stunt double because the guy's, oh, you know, he looks goodness. like him from a from a, a glance, but he's solid as a rock. Uh, interesting, and, yeah. Andretti Autosport, Tim. This is the kind of season I think we were all expecting out of Colton Herta, right? Dominance. He went in there, took pole. He was fast. He was fast early. But what bit him, right? Was it consumption? Was it fuel safe? I mean, right? It's kind of six yeah, and a half dozen. Was it bleeding too really much and, yeah. and not having a draft all day? So you had to use a little more fuel? I don't know. With the long straightaways and the way the draft was working, you wonder if they had to come in a lap earlier in order to fill the tanks because they weren't going to make a whole uh, another four miles to come in or – were they just off on their call and said, you know what, we need to come in now because now's the proper window for us to get to the end. And then you go, oh no, we don't have enough fuel. We got, we get, we have four less miles of fuel in our tank one lap. than everybody else behind us. So terrible potential mistake or just a victim of being out front all day and using more fuel than anybody else. But you saw people lifting a lot, especially mm -hmm. on the coverage. If you, watch the coverage anybody that was basically behind somebody they were lifting if they weren't trying to make the pass and i don't know if he was just a sitting duck all day and um but yeah it it, it faded terribly at the end yeah. and that's all because he had to get it to the to the finish line yeah i i think i think you would agree uh, it, less of bad strategy and more of look when you're leading you lead Right. And mm -hmm. you got to, you kind of have to work with what you've got. And he was leading and he was pushing a lot of air and there's a lot of straightaways there and it's a big track. Yeah. So, you know, it probably came down to a, a, a measure of we're going to be just short and we can't take a chance on it. We have to bring them in and we'll see how it, how it lays. But everybody else being able to make that one extra lap was what killed his race. Yeah. In and fifth place like and real. I thought he was going to lose that fifth to Erickson because Erickson went from like eight and a half seconds behind to, you know, smelling his exhaust. Yeah. So, and it's not like Indianapolis, like a noble where you, you get out of it and let the other guy leave for a little bit. Then you go right. back in a road course, you're out front, you're staying out front. That's Have to. what you do. So yeah, that's interesting. Uh, interesting the way that played out and how that all came together. So uh, to your point, yeah, it's it's got to be going down that straightaway and just using too much fuel. And what do you do? You try to back it off, maybe, but someone else is going to take the lead. I don't know. He led, what, 33 laps, something like that. He led quite a few of the laps. So yeah. um, when you look at um, that, it's, it's a lot more fuel you're using. He led 33 laps. 33. Yeah. 33 laps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He said after the race, losing Road America on fuel mileage is, quote, a killer, and it sucks, which yep. I'm sure it does, dude, right? Because he, I think, you know, really comes into the season with high expectations. Andretti still has this Formula One plan. Colton Herta mm -hmm. factors into this Formula One plan, um, you know, very prominently. And, you know, he's ninth, which means if he finishes even just a couple ahead of where he's at right now, there's no super license in his future. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah. it, it continues to be a little bit of an issue for him. So he's, he kind of has to get in there. Tim, I listened to the radio broadcast um, on the way home. Obviously I was there. I didn't get a chance to see it on TV, but if I heard or if I understood correctly, Michael Andretti was in that pit box this, this weekend, right? 
for mm-hmm. in Colton's. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Which I don't, I don't think he has been in the past. I don't think he has been this season. I think this is, this might be a new thing for us. Our crack listeners, well, somebody will correct me on this thing, which is totally fine, but I, I found that interesting and he had a good, good result and he had a good weekend. So take, take it what you will. Yeah, he did. Yeah. And he's still yet to be on the podium this year. Think of that. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. His best finish is fourth at Long Beach. Otherwise, he's seventh, ninth, and then in the teens, and he's got a 20, 20th place finish. So it's his second best finish of the year, if you would imagine that. But at the end of yep. the day, it was his to win. Yeah. And you come away with a fifth. Disappointing. Yeah, kind of a bummer. Uh, ninth it's got to be a little heartbreaking. Oh, for sure. But but yeah. here's the thing. They were good. I don't think they were particularly good at at uh, at Indy GP. So they were good here, which means, you know, they, they got to feel pretty good about going into Road America or into Mid Ohio. So I would say that they they got to feel pretty good about their chances going into Mid Ohio. Yeah, but just remember how strong they were on the street courses, too. And maybe that's wow. carried over to the road courses yeah, here. Yeah, so yeah. we'll see what, what yeah. happens here. But yeah, obviously yeah. gutted for him. Yeah. Uh, Cal Kirkwood, ninth place, uh, again, turn one, lap one problems. Yeah. So obviously yeah. Detroit yeah, wasn't yeah, his, his fault. Yep. Um, this one, um, his fault, right? He ran into the back of Pato Award, uh, rendering a spin goes to the back of the pack. Um, the fact that he finished ninth place while making up, uh, four pit stops is, is a big deal. Tim, they had a great car. Yeah. It's ready to put mm-hmm. the which again, what happened to Will Power? <laughs> How did Will get the strategy so bad? I yeah. know, right? So you got yeah, because yeah, Kirkwood finished in front of him for sure and had yeah. a disastrous first corner like he did in Detroit. So again, to your point, this was one this one was his fault getting the back of Pato. Last one, Calamilot was on the back of his car, and I know it was turn three in Detroit, but it was the first turn of the race. Yeah. Um, so he's had he's just got to get through the first corner of the race to start and then from there you know have a good finish so he drove through the field uh, i guess that's as good as you could salvage after what you did yeah yeah uh, i i don't think there's anything wrong with that finish at all he had a beard mm-hmm. this weekend too by the way did you see him on tv yeah it's, it's he's been growing it out i think over the last month or or so so yeah, yeah. like a red beard anyway neither here nor there <laughs> um started six had that problem uh, in that, with that Honda engine, I wonder how many Honda engines have, 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 have blown smoke this, uh, this season already. Cause I yeah, feel like there's it, been yeah more than normal. He made the fast six, so he was quick, but couldn't put in a lap time because right at the end of that session, um, nope. the fast 12 session, right after that, the engine just seized and blew up and yeah, I don't know, something terminal. I don't know if it's the engine or not, but it was something terminal. Is what they said. Engine. On the, it was on the smoke broadcast. coming out of the exhaust pipes. Yeah. So. Yeah. Something 20, terminal. Yeah. Twenty third place. Devlin. Yeah. Gearbox. Electrical. Um, Devlin D. Francesco. Twenty <laughs> third. Uh, you know, first fast six maybe. He qualified. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. I I don't I don't know what to make of that. I really don't. I, yeah. I'm. You know, I I would. I know everybody's sure that. You know, Pelot's leaving Ganassi. I'm sure that De Francesco's leaving Andre. Yeah, I think so too. It's just not lived sure. up to expectations. Um, he's had good cars, he's had good teammates, um, but just not been able to live up, I think, to expectations. Yep. He's I not agree. shown those moments of brilliance. Uh, you know who de- has shown moments of brilliance, but it feels like it's been so long ago is the 25th mm-hmm. place finisher of Roman Grosjean, who. Oh. I think wanted to cut grass this weekend and had no interest in staying on track. He wanted to piss people off and he wanted to cut grass this weekend. I think that's what he wanted to do. <laughs> and guess what? Mission accomplished. So <laughs> that is true. He's got people so, want to punch him in the face now. Yep, so <laughs> yep. Hey, Will Power, he's a piece of crap. He needs he needs a punch in the face. Um, Evan Dawson, right? One of our our favorite uh, Twitter followers, you know, tweeted us. Groshan's a stooge and we got to talk about it. I, you know, I, I don't know how we, we define the stooge thing, but I'll tell you what, 
I don't I I don't know where he's going at this point. He's in a contract year. He started his contract year the way you want to start a contract year. But mm -hmm. this middle section of this thing is not contract worthy, in my opinion. I'm not paying those bills. Yeah. I don't know what DHL says, and I don't know what Andretti sees. But mm -hmm. right now, something something is a month and with this. You really liked him coming into. I do, and I still do. This even this season, right? Just yeah. like he's going to do really well. He's going to get a win. He's going to yeah progress and couple yeah. The wheels fell off this weekend for yeah. sure. It's been it was really bad. Yeah, it was you know really you bad. you and, and he gets a. I know you talked about him cutting the grass and being out there, but <laughs> he gets the left rear off in a corner, which is just driver air, nothing going on, and it spins him around, which he, he falls further back. And then, you know, the blocking while he's uh, during a practice that obviously makes Will Power super angry. It was just every time they, on the coverage, they switched to somebody that was off track, it was Grosjean. You're like, right. can't even count how many times he was in the grass. So, not a good weekend at all. And he was off in the, in the, in the gravel, I think during a uh, practice and so on and so forth. So one to, as you would yeah. say, one to forget for sure. One to forget for sure. But it's a whole like segment to forget, right? Crash at Indy, um, crashed out of Detroit, rear suspension crash failure, Texas, right? Right. Crash at Texas. There's a lot of crash damage there. And crash you know, at St. Pete, which that was going yep. for the, that, that was going seem... for victory. Really, what could have been victory or a second, right? Yeah. He threw away a podium. So you want to have somebody who is motivated. You don't want to have somebody who you need to motivate. And he's definitely motivated. But just not... Oh, I hate this word. He's just not strategic. Right? It yeah. just seems too willy-nilly. It just seems it's like... like... An all or nothing and... Yeah. Yeah, just not... Yeah. Yeah. Tim, if you were, if you were writing this contract, would you, would you sign him? Would you extend him? And Andre? He's got, he's got signs of being a really Brilliant. good driver. He's, yeah. Yeah. I, I almost went with that word. Um, he, he's got two second place finishes, right? And mm -hmm. other than that, it's terrible. It's all yep. or nothing. Yeah, which again is how Michael used to drive, but I don't remember having this many incidences and this many crashes, and um, so you just got to dial it back. So I almost think he needs like a who am I to talk? But I almost think he needs like a driver's coach, like to say, yeah. "Listen, this is where we're at. This is what we're doing." Or the team needs to sit him down and go, "It's not there. It's not there. Let's just get through the race. Let's get some good finishes." It's all about the points battle at this point, which is you know terrible for him at this uh, stage and. Um, the event uh, in the series. So I don't know, but you go Indy 30th, Detroit 24th, Road America 25th. Like this is not what you expect out of Grosjean. And he's arguably, right. arguably, I'd say one of the team leads alongside Herta. Should be. At least should be. We all know it. We all know it's not his fitness because he's but, damn fit. Yeah, right. But, but Kirkwood <laughs> has Kirkwood has a win. I, I think he's got yeah. some some mistake, you know, some I think he can be error prone too, but he's kind of new, right? It's his sophomore season. Grosjean's been racing in in top tier racing for a long time. Not the best of reputation when he came over. I didn't really care about that. I thought he was gonna do great things here. Um mm -hmm. I liked him in that DHL car. I liked him in that DHL car over Ryan Hunter Ray. I know that's not popular, but I I stand on that even today. But um Something has to change here. So I asked you, you didn't answer necessarily. So let me, I'm going to add to my question. If you are writing this contract and you need to put a name at the top of it, would you put the name Marcus Erickson or Roman Grosjean at the top of that contract? If you were Michael Andretti. Ooh, that's a very tough question. I'm glad I'm not in Michael's shoes, but if, if I was in Michael's shoes, um, I think I'd uh, stick with Grosjean. I think this is just a really. A, I would. I, I think he's got the ability to really pull through. And it seems like the chemistry is there between the drivers. You saw it when Kirkwood won Long Beach and Grosjean was second. The first thing he did was run up to Kirkwood and congratulated him. Yeah. Um, Grosjean pole, I believe, in Barber. 
Is that correct, Dan? I think that's correct. Yes. Yep. Kirkwood was there to congratulate him immediately. So there's some chemistry there. I think they just need to they need to talk it out with him and say, listen, this three bad races in a row, couple good races, couple mediocre. You, you could have won or been on the podium again at, at St. Pete. Like we just need to dial it back a little bit. I don't like that other drivers are taking shots at him and, and saying, this is how Grosjean races and this is what he does. And, um, you they're know, tired of his or game, whatever, though. they really are. They're, they're yeah. tired of the game. Yeah. The, you know, it's almost like, <clears throat> it's almost like walking through the airport. You know, you're walking to the airport, you're trying to get to your gate and you're kind of walking down and then somebody just stops in front of you. That's almost like Grosjean sometimes, not, not just stopping, but like, he's the only one out there. There isn't 26 other cars, right? He's doing his thing. He's on his program and you know, whatever else. And everybody else has to watch out for this rolling chicane, right? Who's, who's on his own program. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You know, so I, I, I'm sure it's wearing thin. It's wearing thin. I'm sure it is. If he had a couple of wins under his belt, had, had up a little bit further in the, in the championship standings, I don't think anybody could have anything to complain about. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm with you on that. So, yeah. you know, it is one of those things, but uh, obviously you're, you, you're not on the same page as I am and bringing gross jump back. It's one of those things where you're like, ah, oh, maybe you look at Marcus and I don't know if I am. I, I think if I'm, if I'm Andretti and just from where I sit, we're not insiders. From where we sit, I feel like Erickson checks all the boxes that Grosjean checks when considering that DHL sponsorship, right? International appeal. He's mm-hmm. a good driver. He's an Indy 500 winner, right? He's always in, in contention, has been in contention the last couple of years in for championships. Good, solid, good, solid drive. He's a Honda driver now, so you know Honda would probably like to keep him in the in the family. Yeah, I don't think any. I don't think Honda wants to see him go to Aero McLaren. Yeah, I think you got to. I think you got to look long and hard at it. Does that mean you have to pick one or the other? I think that that's kind of the question, right? If if yeah. if Devlin is going to vacate that ride, then maybe that's the ride that that Erickson goes into, or maybe that's the ride that that Grosjean goes into. Maybe that's a DHL call. We want to stay with Grosjean. If you want to hire, if you want to hire Erickson, that's fine. You're going to put him in that other car. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I know we're just scratching the surface on this, but you got to think of Erickson. I think it's a little more complicated because I think Husky's still with Erickson wherever he goes. Sure. So you're bringing that sponsor as well. And whether that's a full season sponsorship or not, I, I don't know. I uh, couldn't tell you. Um, so you got to do some juggling on that front. So I think with either you get international appeal, right? And that's what yep. you want with DHL because they're really an international company. They do some business here in the U.S., but not to the extent that they used to. So I think it's still a good fit. I think it's a, I think it's a one year. Hey, let's let's give it another shot. Let's see what we can do in year three. It would be, which is crazy to think that it'll be his fourth year in IndyCar and his yep. third year with Andretti, come twenty twenty four. But I, I, I'm just fearful that if the other drivers rally against him, then it's going to be a tough to resign him just because yeah. you want to have the drivers sort of, because there's a lot of week in and week out, they're with each other. It's about courtesy on the track. It's about giving people room, potentially in qualifying and doing things like that. And even on race day to make sure you're not crashing somebody out. So and and the ovals ovals are big, right? And so a lot of it cutting across people's front ends. You just want to make sure that everybody has the respect of everybody, and no one's out to, you know, um, do. I'm not saying they're going to do harm to somebody, but they're just, you know, like oh, it's so and so. This it doesn't matter. I'm just going to cut down. You know, yep. you could see that potentially happening. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Good. So. I'm with you. I'm with you there. Um, Timmy, give me your power five. My power five uh, comes from a team that hasn't done a whole lot this year. It hasn't done a whole lot. And I'm, I'm really putting this just on the qualification effort. And, and when I say the team hasn't done a whole lot outside of Indianapolis 500, where they put a lot of effort into it and they did well, uh, mine it goes to uh, Foyt 
and it has to go to Benjamin Peterson and it has to go to Santino Ferrucci. Uh, both made the top 12 or the fast 12, whatever we're calling this in qualifying. They qualified 10th and 11th. Didn't have a great race day, but I think there's a glimmer of hope coming out of Indianapolis where they look good, that there's more to come out of this team. So it really, for me, it's one of those things that who made a leap forward this weekend, although race results didn't show. Um, finishing 16th and 21st um, with Frucci in 16th. At the end of the day for that team, I, I'm, I'm going to put them in the top five, which I don't know if they've been in the top five yet this year, or the power five rankings. So good to them. Hats off. They're figuring it out. If you look back on uh, uh, spring training, they were really bad. Uh, two seconds off is what I understand from everybody else. So they're making those sort of steps forward. So that's why they got my power five ranking. Yeah. And they were in the power five for Indy right? Which I think it was kind of a miracle. Nobody expected that at all, but it was great. Oh, to for fruit for finishing. Yep. Yes. So yep. great. To see yes, that. you're correct. Tim, I could take your notes and except for qualifying, I, I could take your notes and I could, I could give you my power five. Yeah. There's too many times this season I've asked myself, does Michael Shank racing really get Engineering support from Andretti Autosport, right? Meyer mm -hmm. Shank Racing is my power fifth team. Um, and I, I've been questioning this about the, the technical support and the engineering support because here you have, you've got a duo, very accomplished duo between Castro Neves and Pagano. They've underperformed mm -hmm. and they've underperformed the Andretti Autosport squad in general right? By quite a bit. Uh, yeah. 20th place in the championship for Castro Nevis. So, shockingly so. 24th place for Pagano in the championship. Mm -hmm. For comparison, I mean, DeFrancesco's 23rd, but the, the most adrift accomplished Andretti Autosport driver in that stable right now is 13th place, Roman Grosjean. Okay? So yeah. they're way behind. Andretti has stepped up their game this year, stepped up their, which should be their engineering support, mm -hmm. but neither Castro Nevis nor Pagano have been able to really take advantage of it. So they're my power five coming into this or coming out of this race because Castro Nevis qualified 26th, finished 15th. They were always in the discussion somewhere along the lines. They were competitive. Pagano mm -hmm. started 20th and finished 14th, one, one ahead of his teammate, right? Michael Shank was saying that his team needed a reset coming into this race. We've heard that. We heard it with, with, with Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan. But mm -hmm. this team did need a reset, and they needed a reset coming into this race. I would call this a reset. I would call this a reset, and I would call this at a good time because – Mid Ohio is the next race, and that's a home race for Meyer Shank Racing because they're in Central Ohio. Mm -hmm. They're not in Indiana. Yeah, or, not a bad pick. Indiana it was, was one of the picks that yeah. I was looking at too. It was for me. It was them or at Carpenter Racing because oh. you know, like it or not, that removal of Connor Daly from that car was not very popular amongst social media, which. You can't, you can't run your business on social media, but mm -hmm. obviously that, that was a big deal, right? That was a big deal mm -hmm. removing Connor from yeah. that car. So, um, putting Ryan Hunter Ray in there, I think helps, uh, soften that a little bit, but not a bad finish, right? By my guy who I'm always rooting for Renus VK who yeah, finished 12th. 12th, started 15th, finished 12th. That, you know, that team's been kind of lost at some of these, these, road and street courses. So that, I think that was pretty good. Um, and I'm looking down and I'm, I'm getting old now. I can't even see where Ryan Hunter Ray finished. He finished 17th, started 17th, 27th. Yeah. He had a rough, he had a rough weekend on that thing. He really did come into grips with this new track surface and a new yeah. car and everything. He was off else track, was which is why in. he started yeah. as far back as he did. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, it was solid. I, I looked at Renus in 12th and thought, Oh, they didn't do too bad. Looked at where Hunter Ray finished, and I was like, eh, you know, then, uh, but 
it's an improvement, I, I would say, for the team overall. And I think um, this is, again, I'll be interested not only for Meyer Shank and what they do in Middle Ohio, but what this team does uh, here, um, Ed Carpenter Racing does with Hunter Ray and Renus VK coming into Middle Ohio as well. So what do they learn? Uh, what changes can they make? And what do they look like, you know, in a couple of weeks? Yeah. I, we'll see. I mean, uh, both those teams need a reset. Ray Hall Lennerman Lanigan needs a reset. Jack Harvey had just kind of a bonehead sort of thing, which, you know, Tim, you and I disagree about, about Jack Harvey, but I, I think we can both agree that he's not, he's not a dumb dumb, right? I mean, he was, he was speeding up to catch the back of the field, but the back of the field was kind of bunched up going into that turn 14 and there was nowhere for him to go. He went right off into the, into the gravel, mm -hmm. you know, under, under yellow, yeah. which, you know, Hey, if you're the team owner and you're the team owner's kid, I don't know if you can really point fingers at the guy going off in yellow because Graham crashed himself under yellow in Detroit. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's kind of like, point. yeah, it's kind of like a pass. Yeah. I mean, Jack doesn't do dumb, dumb things. I think Jack has struggled at that team, but I think, I think Jack's struggle at that team has been the team's problem. Yeah. So we've said that. And, and Lungard continues to show his, dominance and how good he really is and can be so in this he can, right yeah and, then and this road discipline course. yeah yeah in, this discipline the, yeah and yeah but so you know if they can continue that and then convert that onto the streets and and then try to get some speed on the ovals but you know they made a, a ton of changes with personnel they walked through it on the broadcast of, we made this change that change put people on the bmw program like they did a bunch of different things which I think a mix-up is good because whatever they had wasn't working. Uh, whatever they had at uh, the GMR Grand Prix was good, and that, I think, sort of you know continued here at Road America. But Indy was a disaster. Detroit was a disaster. Yes. And yeah. so, um, you know, they're, they're, they're showing signs, and they're doing the right thing by making changes. And as their team principal said, I think it was their team. He said, you know, we need to do better for our sponsors. Our sponsors deserve more than what we've given them. Uh, and so they've made those changes. And, I, and what was the best livery on the, the track this weekend? Dan, do you have one? Uh, if you want okay. me to say it's that green car, I'm going to say no. <laughs> I thought it was. It looked beautiful on TV. Well, maybe not car. so much in person. Townsend Bell took kind of an unintended shot at, at Hinchcliffe when he said that that, that that livery reminded him of Danica Patrick in the Go Daddy car. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just uh, fun times in the booth and I'm sure. going back and forth with each other. But, but yeah, um, there was that comment. I, I thought it was it was definitely bright. It was definitely uh, you know, the one to be seen, in my opinion, but it is what yeah. it is. Timmy, walk the grid with me. We, we, we talked a lot about power already. We talked about Marcus Erickson, but let's, let's talk a little bit about Marcus's contract standalone, not with Grosjean on there. Mm -hmm. Marcus wants to be paid and he's obviously showing some frustrations that, that Ganassi hasn't stepped up with an offer or anything like that. I thought it was interesting. I heard it said uh, either the broadcast, it was, I listened to so many of these podcasts. It probably was one of the podcasts, but I heard someone say Ganassi doesn't make the first move, right? Ganassi's even with Scott Dixon, Scott or Ganassi doesn't make the first move, meaning Ganassi's not going to go out there and set the market. And I think what he's looking for is, is Marcus, if you want to get paid, that's totally fair, right? You're, you're in the championship discussion two years in a row. You won the Indy 500 last year, damn near won it this year. And if, that last red flag hadn't been thrown. He'd have won it two, two times in a row. Mm -hmm. Go figure out what your market is. Tell me what your market is. And then Chip has to make a decision whether he wants to match it or exceed it. And then Marcus gets to make a decision from there. But I, I mm -hmm. to a degree, I kind of, I'm okay with that. Because it's, it's Marcus that's saying, I want to be paid. Okay, what do you want to be paid? And tell me why you want to be paid that. Because yeah, if you're in demand think... at that that salary, then let's talk about it. 
Yeah, and, and from what I heard, it was more or less Marcus had the feeling they were way off base and that it wasn't going to come together and really frustrated with the whole conversation with Chip Ganassi and his and his crew, if you will, the folks that run that organization. And so I almost think after last year and all the debacle that took place with Pelo that you wouldn't want another messy situation. And I have a feeling yeah. it's turning into that. And that's going to distract, I think, from the task at hand, which is hasn't so far, but winning races, finishing up front, and just having a sense of normalcy inside the team. I, I think there was a lot of yeah. people being alienated last year because of the situation. And I feel like you're falling down in that same sort of channel and you don't want to do that. And you still don't know what's going on with Polo. I know you think he's potentially staying at Ganassi and everybody else, as far as I know, he's already signed with Arrow. So I don't, I don't know why you'd want to go down that road. So I, I think there's a time and a place for it, but I think after what happened last year, I think you got to sort of make the change and go, yeah, we're going to, we like what you're doing and this is what it is, or you don't like it. And for some reason, I don't know why you wouldn't, the guy yeah. hasn't finished out of the top 10 this whole uh, season. So right, it's puzzling to me. Yeah, it is. Um, and maybe Chip is putting a little too much stock into the team's current performance, because I, I think, you know, it's still a delicate balance between the peddler and the, you know, what you're peddling. So I, I think, it, you know, you can't just slot anybody in that car and, and expect to buy for championships or Indy 500s. So, you know, I, I don't know what's, what's going into that, but I think, you know, Chip's probably stubborn, you know, like a lot of us are, and it's probably mm -hmm. more, more, more confirmed in his conviction that, he's not going to negotiate this thing in the press. And that's, yeah. And I was surprised you know, could be what it is. It was said in the press, right? Um, yeah, I, I don't think, think Erickson's driving, doing himself any favors by. Being no, as I don't think so either. Was. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. I guess we'll see what plays out here. I just don't like yeah. it for the team and the, and, and for just the atmosphere around yeah. the camp there. We should maybe talk to the engineer again and see what she has to say about this. Yeah. Hey, um, we talked about Foyt, Foyt being at thermal uh, preseason testing and being about two mm -hmm. seconds off the rest of those teams, but they've really been able to turn the corner. They piece together, you know, race finishes, but they, they seem to show some improvement. And I think we would agree with that, right? Yeah, I, I think so. You, and I think the first time we saw it was for sure the Indy 500. And then, um, you know, Detroit wasn't great for them. Uh, but you come this weekend and you you make the fast 12, like I mentioned. And that's got to – there's momentum there. And that's what I like to see. And you, and you did it on a road course and you're going back to another road course. It should play well for the team. Um, they've unfortunately been a, a back grid runner for – a long time here and so to see some of these glimpses of of hope i think is good for the team but is also good for the fans of indycar that you know remember foyt and understand the legacy and so on and so forth so i think you got to give larry some credit here and i know he doesn't get a lot of credit so yep. from my perspective and i think from a lot of people this is this is good stuff and we'll, we'll see where it goes could they implode for sure they totally could they could implode from here on out and maybe it's just um, you know, uh, I forget the, the, the terminology here, um, you know, lightning in a bottle and they yeah. captured here for a little bit. And, uh, uh, from there, maybe it just goes out. I don't, well, it's, I think the fans sh should watch this. They should track this and, and see where Foyt goes. Um, and I think from what we've heard and we've talked about it before is it has to do with, you know, what is the mentality at, the team and, and what is the culture and does the culture bring cars that are quick or does the culture um have a sort of a good old boys kind of old school kind of feeling and i think it's changing from what i'm saying yeah i i would agree with you i i would if i were 
Ray Hall, Letterman, Lanigan, I'd be taking notice, right? Which you, you already talked about all the changes that they made behind the scenes, rightly so. Um, if you're Ed Carpenter racing, I think you take notice of all the changes. I think they have, rightly so. Mm -hmm. Because those yeah. teams are flush with sponsorship, um, you know, higher profile teams, higher profile drivers in a lot of ways. And right, Ferrucci mm -hmm. and Peterson are running right there and they're putting in their best efforts against much bigger teams. I mean, you know, we talk about Graham. I'm I'm not slamming Graham. I mean, Ferrucci's one point ahead of Graham in 16th place. That shouldn't be the case. That shouldn't be the case. When you take a look at what Ray Hall has in that building and what they have on the side pods and everything else, that shouldn't be the case. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tim, he's in Ferrucci's in 16th place. Elio Castro Nevis is in 20th. Right? David Maluk is 19th. That shouldn't be the mm -hmm. case. Devlin, 23rd. Yeah. Pagano, 24th. We talked about it. That shouldn't be mm -hmm. the case, right? With everything that we've seen. So I think you take notice. I think whatever what whatever Foyt is paying Michael Cannon to come over to that team, I think they need to they need to double it and they need to put his name on a new contract because somebody's gonna come sniffing around. And yeah, if I'm definitely. if I'm Bobby Rahal, if I'm you know Ed Carpenter, I'd probably come sniffing around. Cause yeah, look at how how sure coin has fallen like a brick. They sure have since right this season. One change. Mm -hmm. Michael Cannon, gone. Yep. So I, yeah, you I look at the results just this past week, but you're yep. talking the whole season. Yeah. Yeah. Not good. So, yeah. Um, got a couple other things here. So you'll have to bear with me because I, I was trying to scratch together some notes um, while I was out there. So I have to walk back a little bit of what I've said in the past about Milwaukee. Cause you know, me was no, you don't need Milwaukee. You have road America and you're going to hurt road America. Dude, based on what I saw, Road America isn't going to be hurt at all. It, it isn't going to hurt Road America at all. I think Milwaukee will mm -hmm. come in. It'll do just fine. Um, I don't know that the, the body of humanity that I saw at Road America is going to change by adding a, a 20,000 person attendance at Milwaukee Mile. Um, yeah. And I think, and I'm coming around because, you know, Road America track president is on the record in the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel saying, um, quote, what's what's good for motorsport is good for Road America. He said in an interview, anytime motorsports grows in any market, I think it benefits us. Continues to say we'd be delighted if it was, meaning if Milwaukee Mile was added. Uh, you're in a big metropolitan area. You have that massive reach that maybe we don't have because we're an hour north, right? If folks get yeah. excited about IndyCar there, wait until they see it here. It's good for both parties if it if it was a success. So I, I certainly can't it. say it better than that, but that based on what I saw, I would agree with him. I'm I would, glad I you're would coming around. Kirchner. Yeah. It doesn't mean I'm going. There. Unless you're going to make me go. No, but that's okay. But you you were on site. You got to see what Road America was all about. And then at the end of the day, they talk about Milwaukee. And now you go, yeah, it is better for the sport. It, it makes sense based on location, proximity, and attracting new fans. If you're in a med like that's a destination. If you're going to Road America, you're already a fan. You're not just going, hey, I'm going to swing by the track and check it out. Yeah. I think you're going, right? Milwaukee is kind of like, hey, let's bring some new people in that maybe haven't seen a race before. It's close. It's an oval. It's fun. It's, it's different. Yeah. It's a short track, if you will. So, um, yeah, I, I did see or read that um, there's still some track improvements that need to be made when it comes to yep. safety measures at the Milwaukee Mile in order to make it happen. So, hopefully, um, over time, that'll happen. And, and I've always enjoyed that as the race after Indy, even though it's Detroit now, I, I kind of like that slot and going to another oval, but a short track right here on this massive oval. And then all of a sudden you get down to the small one. So right. not that it has to slot there. It could slot yeah. any time during the summer. Yeah, exactly what you said. Uh, Nathan Brown uh, had a tweet, our, our friend from the Indy, Indy star, we'd like to come back. Uh, Roger Penske saying, you know, we'd like to come back, but they have to do quite a bit more work. Uh, what they've done with some of the safety things are as good as I've seen. 
but it's not all done. They've got a pretty big step mm-hmm. still to take. That was uh, Roger Penske after yeah. his, his visit to Milwaukee Miles. So um, is it a done deal? I don't think so. Is it going to happen? I, I think it's more likely than not. Yeah. Yep. And I think if you ask any of the fans, they want another oval or two. So yeah. you got to bring one back and Milwaukee seems ready to do it. Your other nugget, what's going on? You know, uh, prior to the race start, I don't, I don't think it would have been on the broadcast. Um, the Air Force swore in new recruits. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. It was not on. I didn't watch the pre, though. I went straight yeah. to the race. So they had they had the young men and women who had signed up to join the Air Force, and they had the Air Force recruiting. I, I wouldn't know the title and I'm not going to even try to venture it, but for the area that also encompassed like Northern or the upper peninsula of Michigan. And they, they got to swear in the new recruits there prior to the race start, which that's a cool. big deal. That's a big deal. It is a big deal. Yeah. Um, I always love the feel good stories, right? Those are the feel yeah, good. And that's, that's stories that's about amazing. Yeah. Yeah. These kids, right. These kids, they go and they do this and they're, you know, they're going to defend our country under whatever circumstance they may find themselves in. Cause you never know. Um, yep. and you know, hopefully they either make a career out of that, which can be an amazing career, or they, they find themselves with an opportunity to really get a free education and take advantage of mm-hmm. it. So, uh, yep. kudos to them and, and, you know, <laughs> prayers and good wishes always. Um, Hunko's Hollinger Racing, which is really one of our favorite uh, tracks. I saw a tweet that went out that um, a fan sent a email to their PR team. And it says, and I'm sorry, I'm going to read this whole thing because I have to. It, email, very kind uh, PR female whom spoke to our five-year-old son this evening at, at Road America. He was watching the number 77 car being worked on after practice. And she came over to speak with him, the five-year-old. She allowed him to come a bit closer and also gave him a small uh, Hunko's Hollinger bag. Our son was very excited, and you now have three new fans cheering you on. And it continues on. But you know what, Tim? I thought about Mm -hmm. this because you and I, when we went to Detroit in 22, we're just a couple of knuckleheads, right, walking the paddock. And we sat, and we, we probably spent 15, 20 minutes with Ricardo Hunko's. Yeah. And he told us all kinds of stuff. Knuckleheads. Oh yeah, right? totally. It was all about it. Yep. Yeah. And, and so all I think it. that's, that's, that's the DNA, the DNA of this team. They know. I think so too. Right. They know where the bloodline of this, right. Where the heart of this sport mm-hmm. lives. And it's, it's with those kids and with those parents that are walking on the other side of those lines, looking in and looking in at the garages and seeing what's going on. So, you know, great job. Great job by them. I mean, you can't uh, you can't get any better than that. And they're a great team, yep. as you, as you and I mm-hmm. have talked a lot about. Um, yep. The last thing I've got here: congratulations to Chip Ganassi, two hundred and fiftieth race win this yep. past weekend at Road America. So, Chip likes winners. A lot of wins. Has a lot of wins. I had the banner ready. It was ready to go. I saw. They it. did. <laughs> yeah. So yes, very nice. Yeah. Next up, Mid Ohio. We talked about. We still got a couple of weeks, right? Um, yeah. It's got to be yeah. a Chevy race right after Honda won at Detroit. That's what you said. I I don't know that I'm prepared with a a, a pole win in a dark horse. Give me yours. <laughs> I'll try to scratch somebody together real quick. <laughs> well, I think pole comes out of uh, the Andretti camp, and I think it's going to be Kirkwood on pole. I just think. Uh, Oh. They're gonna they're gonna be quick, uh, so that's a Honda, right? So we got a Honda there, and race win. I've got uh, Scott Dixon. I think it's Dixon's turn. I think he's uh, been lurking. He had again an issue at Road America, but Dixon's always been good there. I think it's time for him to crack the number one spot and to get back into that rhythm. And it's gonna be a tough way to go, right? To you know pick him over his teammate. But um, at the end of the day, I think that's where you go. You go with um, Scott Dixon. And it just, for me, it's, you know, you've seen how many times he's won there and how many times he's um, just 
battling and consistency. So that's where I'm at. Who's your dark horse? Mm, uh, you know, I got to think about that for a second. My dark horse would be... Wow, kind of at a loss today for the dark horse. Didn't have it written down. I'm going to say... Rosenquist in a Chevy. Oh. Fro baby. You know, had a you know, he had a bad um bad race, in my opinion, this past week, and he'll come back strong. He finished third in Detroit. So I'll give it to Felix to pull this one throughout out. You're making me take a Chevy for the win, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give you. <laughs> I'm not making you. You can take one. I'm gonna give you a. You got award Pato winning this win. thing. I'm gonna have Pato winning this thing. Um, wow. I'm. Oh God, I don't. I, uh, Dixon, no. <laughs> Dixon's not a pole guy. Um, no. Let's say power. You got to pick some... power on pole. Wow. Power on pole. You want to know who my dark horse is? I do. The guy in the green car. Oh, really? The guy in Christian the Christian Lungard? We got Lungard. Uh, he's been strong. He's been the, and that's right in their backyard. How sweet would it be for yeah. the Ray Hall camp to get a win here Big um, deal. at Mid Ohio? Yeah, it would Big be a deal. huge deal for them. Yeah. yeah. That's good. None of us had the, the Shank folks up there. I know it's, that's the home track for them. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah interesting oh, yeah well we'll see what happens that's why they race the race you know if you look at last week and our picks for this one i picked the winner do you remember that no but i had i had picking Pelo pillows thing, not so. clairvoyance <laughs> it's not but you didn't pick i, I that, did i so. picked rossi which i was feeling pretty good about looking at all these practice times i, I was like oh man i'm feeling good about rossi he's gonna sweep yeah, you're the right weekend. on with that one yeah yeah, it goes to show you what be, practice really was, means. Yeah, and, and your your dark horse almost won it. You had a dark horse of Colton Herta. I don't know how that's ever a dark horse, but <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll go with it, right? He won the poll. Your dark your dark horse last week won the poll. Yeah, uh, he was. He's in ninth now, which means he was probably outside the top ten. <laughs> that I would say that I'm that's not sure a dark horse. You're picking to Felix as a dark horse at at Rota, at uh, Mid Ohio. So. Yeah, after 20th, I think he can qualify for a dark horse. Yeah. All right. That's all I got, Timmy. Same here. Glad you're back. Glad you had a great time. Great time. Good to be back time. in the saddle. I know we're a day late, and we'll get this published, but uh, it's good stuff as all. As all. Am I doing this one? I think I am. All right. Life is good. Yes. That's all I got. Hey, you thanks for back. listening. As always, we'll be back uh, after mid Ohio. And uh, that race is probably going to be late as well because that's a holiday weekend. And I know we, I've got yep. travel at least. So um, we'll get that one in there as soon as possible. Uh, continue to engage with us on social media, our Twitter uh, handles, as well as on our YouTube channel. Always great. I try to respond to those as, as much as I can. I know Tim chimes in once in a while too when he can't help himself. And, um, you know, we appreciate you, <laughs> you listening. This is the start, yep. Timmy, of our third season podcasting. Yes. Year three. Here we go. Year three. Here it is. Make or break you. I got a contract extension. <laughs> Thank God. Made it just barely. <laughs> yep. right. Thanks, everybody. Good things. Have a great night. Take care.